This is a really cool exercise, and if you've got a teenager, you know, all you got to do is say, hold your arm out, i got questions. <laughs> so let's talk about the verbal indicators. Now, the verbal indicators to me are the most fun. I love listening to people talk because they do such a bad job of lying when they talk. How many have ever seen the show Lie to Me? Only one? That is one of the most fantastic shows ever done on deception indication. It was, the technical consultant for it was Dr. Paul Ekman. The character in the movie was Dr. Cal Lightman, played by Timothy Roth. Now, Tim Roth, in interviews, was trained, said, you know, he had been trained by Dr. Ekman. And he said, the unfortunate thing is that once you learn this stuff, you can't turn it off. Once you start to see deception, you'll see it all the time. Well, I bought the series. There's only three years. So I bought the series, and when all of our favorite shows went off, I convinced my wife to watch Lie to Me with me. She got hooked. Now, she didn't become a deception expert, but she learned enough from the science on the show because I would tell her what was real and what they were embellishing. We were on our way to Fort Benning to see my son on family days. My daughter was with us, and we were talking, and my wife asked her a direct question, and she deflected it. And I looked at my wife and I said, did you catch that? She said, you mean the deflection? And my daughter sticks her head up there and she said, what? I said, you answered a direct question with an indirect answer. That means that you probably told, not, didn't tell the truth. And she said, well, and then she went back and recanted and told us the truth. Now, it was not a big deal. It wasn't like it was something life-changing, but it was really kind of funny that my wife actually picked up on the deflection of my daughter's speech. So let's talk about the verbals. The first verbal that we're going to talk about is the lack of pronouns, personal pronouns, when in a threatening question. One of the most famous uses of this particular deception indicator is Bill Clinton's denial of his, aff his affair with Monica Lewinsky. If you recall that, and if you look it up on YouTube, you can see what I'm talking about. He took he distanced himself by saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. He didn't say her name first. He first just said that woman. This is indicative of deception. He took her out of the, out of the statement. He also did a host of others, and we'll come back to those. When you hear a person take the personal pronouns out of their sentence, this is an indic indicative of a lie. So if you ask a question, how many in sales here have ever asked a prospect a question that you knew they lied to you about? Like, do you have a budget for this project? Don't have one, but should have one sometime in the near future. Now, they didn't say we ha don't have one. They didn't say we should have one in the future. They just said don't have one, should have one in the future. Now, that is a hot spot. I'm going to watch for other things to happen. If they shrugged a shoulder or if they did something else, I'm going to know that this person most likely is telling me a, a lie. Now, if a, if a prospect tells you that they don't have a budget and you sell a big ticket item, you know they're lying anyway because you don't do a big project without a budget. But that makes a good example. How many have ever been lied to by a prospect? How many found out too late? You think everything's going great? They're leading you right down the path and you're educating your competitor just all the way along. Now another neat thing that goes along with this, and it's not on your list, if you ever want to really bust somebody, ask them for a chronology. What, what did you do last weekend, you know, last Saturday? Well, I got up and went to, I got up and had breakfast, and I went to the store, then after I went to the store, I came home and we had lunch, then we went to the mall, then we did this, and we did that, and we did that. Okay, that's great. Tell it to me backwards. Somebody who's telling the truth can back through the story because they're recalling a memory. A person who's lying about their chronology can't do it because they only memorize the lie forward. They don't memorize it backwards. So anytime you have a chronology that you can do and you can get them to do it, try to get them to do it backwards, and you don't have to say, okay, do it backwards. You can say, oh, before you did that, what was it that you did? And most of the time, they'll botch it if they're lying because they can't remember the story in reverse. Just an extra one there, a bonus. Yeah, yeah.
Next, lack of contractions. How many know that we normally speak using contractions? And especially, Stu, like you said, people in the South love contractions. They like to add syllables to three-letter words, and they like to use contractions. When contractions go away, and if you're listening to a person talk and they normally use contractions, and then all of a sudden the contractions stop, and they go into direct language. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Second indicator. Now I, had, now I know he's lying because I've got two that are over 80% each. This is a lie. I did not do this. I do not know that man. I do not know that woman. I did not take that money. I did not steal your pen. All of these, if you hear a lack of contractions going to direct language when they should be using contractions and normally use contractions, pretty high probability that they're lying. Now, that being said, people who are analyticals, I think you probably are an analytical. When they speak formally and when they write, they don't use contractions as much. Academics don't use contractions a lot, especially in their writing. Now, statement analysis, what we're going through right now, works in every form of communication. That's the nice thing about it. It works in emails. It works. The only thing it doesn't really work in is Twitter because they have all the weird stuff that they do. But in emails, text messages, any kind of communication, whether it's written or spoken, these indicators work. So they're fun to, to know. I didn't steal it. I didn't steal a pen. Or why would I steal it? Why would you, I steal your pen? But I didn't steal your pen. But that's taking contractions out of a statement, especially if a person uses a lot of contractions, good indicator because it's a vast change in behavior and that's, that's another indication. Next is the stall. Now the stall techniques are, you hear these a lot. A stall is not necessarily a pause. Now the pregnant pause is one that you do see anytime you ask a person a question that's not a thought-provoking question and it takes them more than two seconds to start answering they most likely are lying because if I ask you a simple yes no question and you have to think about it it's probably a problem also a stall can be done linguistically if I ask you an, a threatening simple question and you res your response is well it's not as simple as yes or no or could you repeat the question? If I ask you what you did yesterday afternoon, you don't, I don't need to repeat that question. But there are many stall techniques that are just like that. Could, it's not as simple as yes or no. Could you repeat the question? That's an excellent question. What they're doing is they're giving themselves time to process and construct the lie. 